Well, howdy guys. Welcome to another episode of Business Every Day. Uh, today, what we are going to be tackling is the XCARV CNC Machine Homing Switch Relays. Uh, these components help the XYZ axis know exactly where things are so it doesn't uh, exceed the track and the mill stays exactly where it needs to be. Uh, this part actually a little bit intimidates me because I've never dealt with these sort of homing switches before. And so we're going to do some wiring. I don't know if we're going to have to do some soldering or how this is all going to play out. But we're going to install the homing switches and see what comes of it. So come along. Well, all right, guys. Sad news. Big mistake uh, in my assembly process. It's going to require some back work. So the gantry is installed correctly. Um, installed the homing switch for um, the x-axis. Now, when I went to install the z-axis, it's on the back side because I don't know why I was thinking this, but this blank I assumed was the front, and it's not. It's the back. And so the sides of my gantry are reversed because the homing switch needs to be on the front side, not the back side. And so this side needs to be pulled off and put on that side, and that side needs to be pulled off and put on this side. That sucks. Uh, also, in your side T-tracks, you need a T-nut. So I was going to have to pull off the L-brackets anyway, but note to self get your orientation correct and maybe look a couple of steps ahead and make sure that you have all the T-nuts in the proper position. <sighs> it, it'll be okay. It's just part of the process. Here we go. Almost made another blunder. Okay, so on the back side of the spindle gantry, uh, there also needs to be a T-nut in here uh, because your homing switch is here and it needs to actually touch something. And so there's the little stud that we will be adding that basically sits right here. But yeah, so I need to pull off this side again and put in a T-nut and we'll be good to go. And hopefully no more disassembly required. Ah, we'll see. Mistake 492.8. Uh, the T nut, uh, they have this special insert T nut for the stopper for the, uh, for the thing. So now I gotta take, if I'm gonna do it properly, I gotta take the gantry off again. Then remove, yeah. 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 What can you do? All right, let's do it. So the two homing switches are now in. This is the forward switch mounted on the gantry. And that is the stopper block. It is at two inches from the angled corner. And then on the back side, on the main gantry, we got our homing switch. And then again, two inches from the sidewall. Let's do this.
All right, so there are a couple parts that you might have to be a little intuitive on. Um, but for the drag train track, after you pop them all open, you'll need to pop off the ends, which are the ends that are facing down. Um, you just take a flathead screwdriver in between, and then you just pop them out. They're just these little uh, side pieces so that you can see how they pop out there. Uh, and then what we're going to be doing is mounting them to the back track and then to the top of the gantry i'm not exactly sure i think it mounts over here i'm not exactly sure how it all mounts up just yet but that is what we're doing um, but according to the instructions they want you to mount it on the track like i said that's what it's here um, these are the inserts the m5 post assembly nut inserts and uh, the flat m uh, I believe these are the M10s. Yeah, M5 10 millimeter. So these are the flat ones that you want to use to install this. So the interesting thing though is once they put on that backing track, again, this is how it looks. The angle is down. You got the 1000 millimeter uh, backing track. Is they want you to install the Z probe. Now I got the bundle, so I do have the Z probe. Um, but that's the next step. So. We're going to install the Z-Pro and see how this goes. So something the instructions do not tell you, and I'm still figuring it out, but the back plate, this is where the uh, chain bracket is going to be mounted to like so um they don't tell you what these screws are and so through much looking and debating and i think i finally found it i think it's the m4 times 10 button head screw quantity 4 because we're also going to be putting it on the side here uh and so we're going to see if that actually works but i think it is so we're going to go with it. The only question that I have is how the belt's going to go. Is the belt going to go over? I think it's just going to go over here so that this track is the part of the gantry is um, free and clear um, because the screws do hang over about uh, one quarter of an inch. But we're going to see here in just a minute. All right, another learned moment that the pictures show, but again, the instructions are a little less than helpful. So the top mounting bracket is held on by the nylon uh, nuts. So what it says to use is the 5M times 10 flathead screws. Well, that is true. You use that for the T-nuts, but for the actual regular nuts, you use the M512 flats. So I need to swap these out. These are currently the 10 flats. I need to swap them out for the 12 flats so I can use these 10 flats for the other mounting bracket. Yeah, if that made sense. So for the, uh, for the nuts, you use the 12s, and for the T-nuts, you use the 10s. I was all sort of confused for here for a moment because all of them are different lengths and they don't all say what they are for. But on the sidebands of everything, um, it will say whether or not it's an X, Y, or Z axis. And it also says on, there's some labels, so that's a Y axis. But you have a 97, an 89, and a 42 inch. These are all the stepper motors, which are these components. And then you have three different lengths, or excuse me, two different lengths of the, um, the homing switches. So you have two 95s, and then you have a 50. The 295s, these ones are actually labeled. It says Z limit, and this one is X limit, and this one is Y limit. The shorter one is the Y limit. And so that will be, this will be the shorter one, 
Y limit, and then your longer ones will be Z limit and X limit. So let's get this wire going. So we're gonna basically loop all the wire around the back and then down the track here. It will loop around and come back towards this way and our uh, controller component will actually sit right here um, to the left of the main gantry spindle. Um, so let's get that started. All right, on the left side of the full assembly, we got two holes here. This is where our uh, bracket is going to go. Again, uh, it doesn't say what screws to use here. And so what I am finding is that it is the M4 uh, times 10 but button head screws, the little ones, and the M4 nylon insert lock nuts because m5 does not fit in that hole it is m4 again and so what i've done on the back side here is you got your y-axis motor with the zip ties you got the plastic chain to hold everything together i got zip ties here zip ties here for extra security want to make sure everything's nice and loose and but taut you know um the center uh, attachment bracket where this chain actually secures to this bar um, I put it right in the middle so the whole bar is 1,000 centimeter or excuse me 1,000 millimeters so this is at 500 millimeters and which it's like 19 and a half uh, inches yeah right here in the middle so it's gonna go over and around everything comes off the side here and then we're gonna have another uh, rail uh, chain thing this one right here that's going to go off the back here and then there'll be the controller here and this other side panel Here we are, all wired up. Uh, I still need to put in the controller module next, um, but all of the track and railing, it's all zip tied in. It slides, it moves, nothing gets hung up. 
uh, if I can tell you anything, it just requires so many fine adjustments. You got to adjust the brackets. You got to adjust where it sits. You got to adjust, I mean, how the uh, rail track rolls back so that it doesn't scrape against the back here and get hung up. There are just so many fine adjustments. Getting your brackets right. Um, again, I got the bundle, and so I got the sideboard attachment. Um, this is where the controller module and everything will be. Uh, but yeah, there's just there's so many pieces and parts that you have to make sure that you get right, making sure that all of your switches are on the uh, appropriate locations, make sure that the wires are in the correct uh, negative and positive, making sure that they're pointed in the right direction, that nothing, again, binds up when you move it left, when you move it to the right. Um, everything is just free flow. Um, making sure that your motors are in the correct orientation. There is a lot, a lot of moving parts here and it's good. It's just, it, it's a thing. And it just requires a lot of trial and error, getting it back and forth. Uh, the hardest part that I have encountered so far is making sure that I'm using the correct hardware. Um, the bags are labeled, but not every step is described in the instruction manual. And so it's a little bit of a trial and error thing to make sure that it all fits correctly. Um, I, I feel like I'm going to have extra pieces and I don't know why because I'm following the instructions as best as I can and I'm using all of the pieces that they're describing uh, but I have quite a few extra parts that I haven't used yet and I don't I, we'll figure that out uh, but I will say one of the things that um, I have I actually I was one short and uh, I was able to find one in my own little toolkit uh, where the T-slots, the T-slot, the nuts. And I was one short, and so I think I might have used an extra somewhere. I'm not sure just yet. Um, I still I still have two at the top here and two at the top here. I believe that's for when I belt this thing, which is going to be the next step. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It's going to be really interesting um yeah i'm going to wire up the controller next and then the dust collection system because i have the full dust collection system as well and then we're going to turn this thing on and see what we can make and what kind of trouble we can get into so it's going to be a fun journey stay tuned for the next uh, episode where we will be doing the belts and then the controller module um yeah i am excited about getting all these these wires hooked into our module and get carving let's do it catch you next time